Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to follow up on my previous deep dive video I did all about private link. And I wanted to dive into the DNS configuration of it a little bit deeper. I explained in that deep dive video how important DNS was to the functionality of private link and talked about, well, there's integrations with Azure private DNS or your own custom DNS options. So I wanted to just explore both of those. Now, if you remember from that other video, we have the idea that when we enable private link on a service, the regular record now becomes an alias to a private link child zone, which what Azure actually does is also create a record now in that private link zone that points to the public IP, just so ongoing public access doesn't break. So if I was to look over here and we look at an example record, if I actually type NSLOOKUP correctly, remembering to use an L, N, what we can see is, hey, this is actually out on the internet. I don't have a private DNS available. This is just a regular machine. And what we can see here is that whole idea that, hey, I'm looking up for my storage account. The regular storage account record now actually points to this private link child zone version, which out on the internet, they created that record that points to the regular storage account cluster, which resolves to the public IP. So from the internet, unless I've blocked through the firewall, I could still get to that storage account. But often we don't want to do that. We want to block the access and I need to use the private endpoint IP address. So the first option is if I just integrate with Azure Private DNS. What I have here is I have a private endpoint to the blob service. And if we just go ahead and look at this private endpoint, we can see we have this option for DNS configuration and I have enabled it. So you can see here, I have enabled this link to this private link.blob.core.windows.net zone and it has gone and created for me, we can see this fully qualified domain name, in fact, we'll just zoom in on that, which points to the IP address of the private endpoint. We can see that matches the private endpoint IP address. If we actually dug around in the configuration and looked again at that, we can see the network interface that it's actually using where we can see it has that 10.0.0.6 IP. So that's what that resolves to in there. And if I go and actually look at that private DNS zone, so if I look at my Azure private DNS zones, you can see I have a private DNS zone, private link.blob.core.windows.net. And in there, it created the record. It created the name of the storage account, and the IP address of the private endpoint in that network. So that's what I would actually see. If I actually go and look at a VM in that virtual network, and I go and resolve the record, what we see is, sure enough, we have the idea of, hey, that same query for the same storage account. Once again, it points to the private link variant, because it's an alias, but this time, this virtual network is linked for resolution to that private link zone, so it resolves to the private endpoint IP address. And we can see that link. So if this is the private link zone, if we look at virtual network links, we can see it's bound to that particular virtual network. And I could link this to multiple virtual networks if I was using those, uh, maybe for peering, I was using the same private endpoint. So that's the really nice, easy Azure DNS option. Now what I also have is I have another private endpoint to blob again in a different subscription to a different virtual network. This means it would get a different IP address because it's a different PE in a different virtual network. So this time if we actually go and look at the network interface, we can see this time it's 10.0.1.4. And also this time, I am not using the Azure DNS integration. If we look at the configuration name, there were no results there. Because this virtual network, this exists in, actually uses custom DNS. 
to actually using Active Directory. But it doesn't really make a huge difference. It's just not auto configured for me. So all I have to do this time is within my DNS configuration. So this is running on Active Directory integration. But you can see all I had to do was create a private link.blob.core.windows.net zone. I also had one for files. Now within that zone, oh, lost my screen for a second. Within that zone, you can see I manually created a record for the storage account name. And I created it to map as an address record 10.0.1.4. So it now points to the private endpoint. So now if I'm a machine in that virtual network, it still will just carry on running. If I look at my Azure client and I do exactly the same lookup for that same name, well, we see exactly the same thing again. We see that whole idea of, hey, I'm looking up this name. Once again, it resolves to the private link version of the name. And because that DNS server for my virtual network has a zone, private link.blob.core.windows.net, it goes and queries that ahead of that public version that Azure created just to make sure things still don't break. And it resolves to the private endpoint IP address for that virtual network. So that was me manually creating the record. And that's it. They're the two kind of DNS options. So we can see one where super easy, I'm just integrating directly with Azure Private DNS and it creates the records for me. There's nothing I have to do. It just went and created it as part of that PE configuration. Or if I'm using my own custom DNS, I just have to create a zone, private link dot whatever the service is, and then I have to go and manually add the record. So I hope that cleared up and helped with the DNS side. Until next time, take care.